so hello everyone, my name is Lisa, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about how we can lint our Angular applications with a tool that I wrote called Colalyzer. Actually, how many of you have used Colalyzer? Okay, and uh, it's integrated in the, in the Angular CLI, so I guess most of you have already touched it, maybe without knowing. But uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to focus on how it works, why we should use it, and what's the motivation behind it. A couple of words about me. Uh, so I'm a software engineer, and that's what I do mostly. Currently in Learn Capital, but I'm also quite active in the open source community. So a few of my projects that I'm working on are Angular Seed, Colalyzer, I've been contributing to the Angular Mobile Toolkit together with Alex and Jeff, and uh, a couple of other projects. And I also recently finished the second edition of my book, Getting Started with Angular. The first edition was called Switching to Angular 2, but like with the new branding, I had to do some changes. And it's aligned with the latest changes introduced by Angular 4, so it should be ready to go. And I'm also speaking of this event, so if you're willing to be on a cruise ship for three days and a half, you're welcome to join us. It's be fun. So the agenda for today. First, we are going to discuss what is the history and the motivation behind this tool Colalyzer and what actually it does. And after that, we're going to get a little bit more technical and discuss how it actually works and uh, how it can be improved. So a history behind the tool. Basically, I started working on a list of best practices motivated by my work on the Angular, uh, on my book Switching to Angular 2, and I had there the chance to work with Mishko Henry. So he gave me great suggestions of what I'm doing wrong and what can be improved. So that's why I just collected these practices and I published them on, uh, in a document on GitHub called the Angular 2 Style Guide. And a lot of guys from the community gave me their support. They, explained, they, they told me how they're using Angular. I also got some insight of how Google is using Angular internally. So this uh, style guide went really well initially. And a little bit after that, Igor from the core team, he asked me if I'm willing to join the Style Guys team together with John Papa and Corbell and a couple of other folks. So we kept working uh, on this official Style Guide, the Angular Style Guide. Now the, <coughs> the two is actually very valid. So we published this right before ng-conf last year. But I was thinking what is the process of actually applying the Style Guide, implementing it inside of our project. Usually the, the process is as follows. So first of all, we need to eventually form the official style guide if our project has some different needs. And based on this, we can just bend it a little bit in order to fit our needs. Right after that, we need to introduce it to the entire organization. And in the end, we need to verify that each individual code change that we do follows the style guide. This, introduced, this includes legacy goals as well as Call that like changes uh, and new features and so on. And uh, this is usually introduced, being introduced by uh, code reviews. How many of you are doing code review on a regular basis? Yeah. And it's it, sometimes it's fun, but not always, right? Yeah. Yeah. Code code reviews they are usually. While it's uh, manual, they are boring and they are error prone. And of course, we cannot get rid of code reviews entirely because getting, uh, like, checking if a given piece of code follows the style guide is not the only purpose of code reviews. But we were at least able to make them a little bit shorter, like without doing boring stuff like uh, taking care of uh, rejecting code which has the rename of outputs or inputs. So I thought, well, Angular it is built with tooling in mind. The templates are really easy for static code analysis, and you get great type information from TypeScript because that's how Angular is built. And with the awesome compiler, well, at this time we didn't have the compiler with that stable state yet, but it, we were able to produce some pretty efficient static code analysis and just throw warnings when your piece of code doesn't follow the style guide. So Colalyzer basically is a tool which performs static code analysis over our projects and verifies whether we are following the style guides or not. And also it adds some additional features that we're going to briefly mention. Few of the rules of, this, of the Colalyzer tool are that uh, it can get track of your components, like naming conventions, 
So it is going to verify if your components and directives have a specific name suffix. Also, it is going to verify if your uh, selectors are following the style guide. So your component should be used as elements, and your directives should be used as attributes, and they should be with camel case or with this case naming. We also need to make sure that uh, our directives implement the interfaces corresponding to the lifecycle tools that we use. It can also verify if you have bounds to public members or you have bounds to some private members and your code is not going to work with the end of time to power. And a few other things. For instance, it can verify if your components have some dead CSS or not. Of course, it doesn't cover 100% of the cases because you can have some quite dynamic behavior there. This is for square code. It has a few other rules that you can take a look at at uh, colorizer.com or github.com slash and get slash colorizer. So here is how actually the tool works. So you can see it uses the link here, and so uh, that's the integration with Visual Studio Code. So it can verify the naming of your components, if you have implemented lifecycle tools or not, and so on and so forth. It can also analyze not only your TypeScript code, but also your templates, your styles, and whatever required. I also built a very quick playground. So you can take a look at globalizer.com. There you have this editor, and the litter is run in web workers, so each time you do a call change, basically this is going to send your code to the web worker. The web worker is going to parse the code, uh, the litter is going to run all the different rules, and the output is going to be visualized in the main guide thread. So how actually this tool works? Here we're going to get a little bit technical. We're going to discuss how compiler compilers work because we need to know at least the front end of the compiler in order to be able to analyze the output of this phase. Actually, how many of you have built this a tiny programming language or something like DSL or something? Okay, so yeah, we're going to just briefly discuss individual steps that your code goes through in order to get compiled. So we can think of this of, of the compiler as just some kind of function. It accepts some inputs and returns an output. For instance, in case of TypeScript, it returns it usually accepts TypeScript code, some configuration, and it just outputs JavaScript. If we take a look at like a little bit deeper look in the compiler, we can see that it has front end and it also has a back end. The front end is generally responsible for reading your code, so turning it into some intermediate formats, and after that passing it to the backend. After that, the backend just can do some uh, code generation, for instance. We're going to focus on the front end, because that's mostly what we need for static code analysis. The front end usually performs, for most compilers, not always, but performs lexical analysis. It also performs syntax analysis and eventually syntax, semantic analysis. The lexical analysis is something quite simple. So we get, we have our program. Here we're just declaring, uh, defining a constant called product, which equals the product of two uh, other variables, or constants, two other identifiers. When we try to perform a lexical analysis uh, with the function called tokenize in this case, which actually implements the logic for the lexical analyzer, we're just going to get a list of tokens. And these tokens are just objects, which has a uh, lexeme, which is just a substring of our program, and they also have a type. In this case, type could be either keyword, identifier, or an operator, or whatever. Right after that, we pass just the output of the lexical analyzer to our parse, to our syntax analyzer. Here, we're going to get as outputs some diagnostics, and also we're going to get this tree, this abstract representation of our uh, program. Which in this case, uh, this tree here, is called AST, or abstract syntax tree. On the, as rule node here, we have const. After that, on the left, we have, on the, left we have the expression, which is actually mod modification of A and B. And on the right, we have the product identifier. And in order to be more complete, since Colorizer does some type checking thanks to some 
features uh, implemented in Tizen by the Angular team. If we perform type checking, we can verify if our program follows some predefined specifications. So we can prove that our program is valid to some extent. If we perform type checking over our expression, first of all, we need to check whether the custom declaration is correct. After that, we need to check whether the expression used for the setting the value of the constant is correct, so check expression. Right after that, since the expression here was actually just a binary operation, we need to check if, if it is multiplication, and if it is multiplication, we need to verify whether the left and the right operands of the multiplication are actually a type number, and that's it. So if we trace this here and turn it a bit closer, we can see that first we're going to, so we're just exploiting like using the visitor pattern here. So we're going to visit each individual node in this after syntax tree. We're going to visit the const node. After that, we're going to visit the expression here. We're going to visit, uh, since it is a binary operation, we're going to invoke the check binary operation method which, on the other hand, is going to verify whether the left operand is a type number, and if it's a type number, we're going to also verify that the right operand is a type number. And uh, that's it. So now we are kind of masters in compiling. Just, yeah, basically setting it up. That's, yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, that's basically what I do in Polo. I'm just working different trees. And the static code analysis that we perform, it's actually a type of analysis which is being performed without executing the program. <coughs> all right, so now we can see how actually Polo works. My initial goals were to provide some, some kind of deployable tool which allows to have different rules. And to, so I want to make it extensible. I want to have a powerful error reporting mechanism. And I also want to reuse as much as possible because I, initially my plan was like that I'm going to be the only one working on this. So I wasn't able to write my own uh, actual parser from scratch or error reporting. And so I decided that I can obviously reuse the parsing already provided by TypeScript. So Basically, it will either use TypeScript internally in order to produce the abstract syntax tree and it's also perform some type checking by using the TypeScript type checker. And so since I also wanted to make it available for any ID and text editor and also for the CLI and for everything, I wanted to reuse the error reporting mechanism or the warning reporting mechanism of TSNint. So TSNint is another tool that I reuse and Luckily, these guys here from Google, from the Angular team, uh, Alex Ego and Martin and Scott in the middle, who is uh, who was the intern of Alex, they work in TSNint. These are their GitHub avatars. So the, the one in the middle is just the choice of Scott. Uh, they work on static. Uh, they work on type checking in TSNint. So TSNint also provides type checking now. So it is just perfect fit for Colorado. And let's just trace how one of the rules in Polarizer works. This rule here is for verification that the selector of a given component follows specific guidelines. So we're going to verify that the element that the component selectors are type elements. Here is a component which obviously doesn't follow the style guide. The first thing that we're going to do is just to perform lexical analysis by using TypeScript. We're going to get the individual tokens and we're going to pass them to the parser. Right after that, we're going to get the AST. So basically, this piece of code here, this string actually, is going to be turned into a tree. It's not going to be exactly this way, but it, will, it is going to have a similar shape. Eventually, it's going to have a little bit more nodes and move a little bit more complicated. And here is uh, some cell code for the rule implementation. We, first of all, in order to verify whether the selector is type element, we need to visit the class, which is at the actual, contains the actual implementation of the component. After that, we need to visit its decorators, all of them, and if one of the decorators is called component, we want to perform some validation over the metadata which is declared in this component decorator. 
And if the selector, if there is no selector, if the selector is not of a type of uh, element, then you just want to use TSLIN in order to report the warning. And here is how it looks to graph it. First of all, we're going to visit the class node, like the root node of the tree. Right after that, we're going to visit the only decorator that it has. After that, we're going to visit the metadata, which is just a collection of the properties in the object literal that is passed to the components of the creator. We're going to find out that tooltip is of type. Uh, it, it's not a selector of type element here, but an attribute, so we're just going to throw a warning. And we're able to perform some even more fun things this way. We can produce EST not only of TypeScript, but also the templates and the styles. So in this case here, we just have a very simple component declaration, the header component, which has templates with the header element. It also has, it has an H1 tag and some greeting for the user. And we also have some styles. So what we can do here is to just see, like, step and verify and see that the greeting Band style is actually not applied to the template. And how we can do this? Well, first we're going to build the AST that we're already familiar with. And after that, we can just try to analyze these properties, which defines uh, the metadata, the styles and the templates. But for the template, we have a string. For the styles, we have a string as well. So strings are very not convenient for static cause analysis. Like, we, maybe we might be able to perform some crazy regular expression in order to verify whether all the different selectors uh, match elements in the template, but it's not very reasonable. So instead, we want to produce similar AST for the template and for the styles. And after that, we can perform some algorithms, which if you're interested, we can talk about later. But in general, this is how water and result is going to be. So we're just going to highlight all the different unused styles and thanks to the TSLint auto fixes, we can just drop them for our component. And this looks perfect for now, but it's like we're almost there, but not exactly, because there are some big problems in this. So we're performing linting only per file, and we're not doing any type checking at all. Well, what if the selector, the component was actually of some variable which was defined somewhere and it just not string which is inline inside of the component decorator? For instance, this here is going to fail. First of all, we can notice that we're just getting aliens of the component decorator in ng component, so our check is not really going to work since we're just checking if the name of the decorator is component and here it is ng component. And so also, our selector here, it is just a concatenation of two strings. Well, we were just trying to parse the property name selector, so. In order to make this work, we need to first do some type checking and see if actual, the actual components here, engine components and components are the same thing. And we also need to evaluate selector, just like statically without invoking the program and verify that it's not actually a uh, selector of type element. In order to fix this, I created a wrapper around the Angular compiler, which already does some of these things. I created this to ngast. It's still kind of under development, but eventually, if you're interested in parsing your Angular projects, you can take a look at it. It provides higher level API for the compiler and allows some deep metadata collection. So basically, it is going to create some way for entire project thanks to the compiler. It performs uh, some static iteration of the so-called foldable expression. So if a given expression can be evaluated according to some predefined rules, it's going to be evaluated and its value is going to be used. The actual linting and it's the other things. So in general, NGST is going to take this component here and return some JavaScript objects. It's going to get the program selector, it's going to verify that this is actually a component declaration, although uh, ng component is not actually called component in this case, and so on. So yeah, that's what is coming in Angular and Colorizer 3. They're going to be breaking changes, uh, but this is going to be, I'm going to open here to the CLI, so you're not going to notice them. Basically, I'm planning some deep metadata collections, some outfixes, and also with more, including removal of that CSS. 
and thank you very much for your attention. Hey there. Do you use Angular? Do you like fun in the sun? And how do you feel about boats? If you're nodding yes, then uh, come join us on NG Cruise to learn more about Angular while on a fabulous Caribbean cruise. Check out ngcruise.com for speaker lineup, workshop details, and to book your spot today. <laughs>